Ranking as a first result in Google is one thing, but if you want to stay there, then you need to monitor the performance and if there's a negative trend, then you need to update your content. And I can tell you from my own experience that this approach works quite well. As an example, we are looking at the performance for a specific keyword for one of my websites from the last 12 months. And as you can see, I was ranking as the first position in Google for several months, and this even with a relative new website. And also when the performance dropped, so here when Google rolled out updates as well as the AI overviews, I was able due to the monitoring and also due to the optimization to recover quite quickly from the position loss from an average position between eight and 10 back to a better position, which is around five or even better again in the top three results. And I am doing this process for every keyword where I know that the traffic is valuable. So either for commercial or transactional keywords. And here's another example from the last six months for a transactional keyword where I am constantly ranking as a first result. And even the overall traffic or search volume is quite low. It doesn't matter because whoever is going to search for this query took already the decision to buy something. But the issue is that if you have a website, then you have most likely also multiple pages and taking care of every page manually is really time consuming or even not possible. As an example here, 110 pages are indexed and most of them are also getting traffic. That means I have to take care of 110 pages and always have an eye on the performance. And if there's a negative trend and also to take care of the optimization. And that is exactly the reason why I've created this NNN workflow as it generates reports like this so that I can quickly check if I have to optimize the title with copy paste recommendations, already pre-filtered keyword opportunities based on the Google search console performance and the same for the meta description. And of course, also for the on-page content, as you can see here, I have recommendations for the headings as well as for the paragraph and the workflow tells me to replay this text with this one. And that's exactly the process that I am doing over the last year with multiple websites. And as of now, it works really good. Apart from that, this report covers also FAQ optimization, which is quite nice because these FAQs usually contain long tail keywords. And the best part is that this data is not hallucinated. It's based on the data from the Google search console, as well as data from ZERP API, which means the workflow has access to real time data based on parameters such as the location, language, country. And in order to get FAQs that are also relevant, we have access to not only the top results, but also to snippets like people also ask or related searches. And before we have a look into the workflow itself, and I will tell you exactly what happens here, let me give you a quick example on how to use this report. And let's say we want to optimize the on-page content, which means we want to replace a few paragraphs or also update the heading. Then we can simply copy the text that is here in red, go to your content management system on general where your post is, search for it. And then we can see the recommendation is to replace this text, this one, this paragraph integrates keywords that we are already ranking for. And we know that because we do have access to the Google search console. All right, then let's have a look into the workflow itself. And the execution is quite simple because we have a form. So let's say I want to optimize this article here. So the first step would be to copy the URL, go back, execute the workflow. And then we have to fill out a few parameters. So we have the URL and we also need to pass the domain because this workflow is also able to optimize different websites. As long as your website is connected to the Google search console and you have also access. And let's say the focus keyword is NNN Google search console template. So this is also the keyword that we are trying to rank for. And this one is also used to get the ZERP results. And to make it a little bit more specific, we can set a country key, let's say US. And if you're doing it for local SEO, then you can also add here the location. But in this case, it does not make sense to optimize the page for any location. After that, we can also specify the language. So in this case it would be English. And we can also set a time frame, which will be used when we get data from the Google search console. So let's say the last month. And once the required fields are filled out, we can click on submit. And the first thing that happens is that we get the ZERP results, including AI overviews. Then we crawl the content from the article because otherwise we won't be able to give recommendations on how to replace a given paragraph or also recommendations for the meta description titles, as well as for the FAQs. After that, we pull data from the Google search console for the specific page. And we create also a Google spreadsheet because afterwards the data is also saved there in case you want to manually review the 
data that was fetched from the Google Search Console. Once a part on the left side is done, we will merge the data in order to be able to give recommendations that are not only based on data from the Google Search Console, but also from the ZERP results in real time. And as the keys, we have the AI overview because apparently for this keyword, an AI overview exists. Then we have also the organic results with data like the position, title, snippet, and also related questions. And of course, also the article with keys such as the title, description, and the complete content on Markdown. And the data key contains the data from the Google Search Console. So here we can see data for the keyword and at end Google Search Console with data for the previous and also current period. Because if we don't calculate the data for two specific periods, then we wouldn't be able to figure out if the performance for a given keyword is good or bad. After that, the complete data is passed to the content optimization, which consists out of four different calls to OpenAI. The structure of them is quite similar. All of them have a structured output parser because if we don't have a reliable output, then it would be quite hard to create a report like this. As an example, here we do have the part where we create title recommendations and our title parser contains exactly the structure which is required for creating a report. So as an example, here we can see a quick content summary, patterns that are used by the competitor, and also different title variations, which are basically the recommendations. As an example, here we have the recommendation for the title, which would be NNN Google Search Console template for automated SEO insights 2025. The search intent would be informational. And we can also see the target keyword, which was fetched from the Google Search Console. And this one is a quite good example because this is one of the keywords that the page is already ranking for. And in order to increase the chance to gain a better ranking, it's also directly used in the beginning of the title. And since it's possible that a few recommendations are bad or do not fit the content, I have configured the structured output parser that it always returns 10 different title recommendations. And the logic is quite similar for optimizing the meter descriptions, FAQs, as well as for rewriting the content. So all of them have a structured output parser and the notes for the titles, meta descriptions, and FAQs are using the GBT41 mini model because this model is quite cheap, but it still generates good results, except for the part where we rewrite the content. So the on-page content updates, which we see here, are quite important. And that's also the reason why I've set here another model, which is O3, because in my opinion, O3 is a little bit better when you want to update page content. And apart from that, we can also see in the prompt, which is here that we have a lot of variables, which are the country, language, the current year, because otherwise it would be possible that we would get recommendations for title, meter descriptions, or also for the content based on the last year where the large language model is trained on. Then we have data for the current article, so the title, meter description, content, and also our main target keyword, which is equal to the query that we used for the ZERP results. And in order to be able to create really good recommendations that are really based on data, either from the ZERPs, so in other words, data from the competitors or data from your Google Search Console, we also pass this data. So here we have the ZERP data. We have the AI overview data, which also belongs to the ZERP data, related questions, and also keyword performance data. So this part is coming from a Google Search Console. And as you can see, if you pass all the data, then the prompt is going to be really long which is also one of the reasons why it makes sense to use for this call a model that can handle more tokens. After the content optimization part, the next step is to generate and also save the report. So the first step is to set the report fields, which would be in this case, the recommendations for the titles, meta description, FAQs, as well as for the content updates. And after that, there's a code note that takes care of creating dynamically HTML content for each section which is in this case, again, for the title, meta descriptions, content, as well as for the FAQs. And after that, we pass these HTML fragments into a report, which already includes the styling, as well as static JavaScript code, which are responsible for the interactivity. As an example, here we have the accordion. Without JavaScript, we wouldn't be able to toggle it. And it's the same also for the copy button. And the final step is to convert the HTML string into a file which is in the last step uploaded to Google Drive. As an example, this file, which is generated here, if we have a look into it, which is quite similar to the report, which we have here, because I took the same page. And that is exactly the file that is also uploaded to Google Drive. And you might notice that this workflow is also executing sub-workflows. As an example, we have here sub-workflow 
to convert any string into a file. And here on the left side, we have sub workflows for creating Google Sheets, pulling data from the Google Search Console, crawling the content from any URL, and also sub workflow in order to fetch usurp results, related questions, AI reviews, and so forth. And the reason why I've created sub workflows is because then I'm also able to use this workflows somewhere else. As an example, instead of creating here directly from a string a file, we have a sub workflow that takes parameters such as a file name, the string that will be converted to a base64 string, as well as the MIME type, which means in this case, we create a file with the file name SEO report for Anet and Google Search Console integration, then the date from today, as well as the file extension. The file content would be in this case, our HTML string, and the MIME type is text HTML. And this data is then passed to a sub workflow, which contains a code node that takes care of converting any string to a base64 string. And after that, it uses a node that is already available in NNN, which takes care of converting a base64 string into a file. And after that, this data, or in other words, file is sent back to the workflow. And then we are able to use it here. As another example, I have a lot of SEO workflows where I need to crawl the content from any URL, which is the reason why it also makes sense to create a sub workflow for it. And this workflow looks quite similar. So if we have a look into it, then we can see we have only two nodes and the first node takes care of using the API from Zerpa so that we are able to return the title, meta description, also the on-page content. And since I'm only interested in the title, description, and markdown, I have added here another edit node that takes care that only these three keys are returned. The sub workflow that might be more interesting is this one, because this node takes care of getting data from the ZERP results, but it's also straightforward. So here we have the same as parameters, we pass data such as a country, query, location, in case you want to optimize a page for a specific city as well as the host language, which is in this case English. And for getting data from the API, we simply need an HTTP node, which does a request to the search endpoint. And as an example, here we can see that we get data such as the inline videos, AI overview, organic results, and also related searches. And in case you want to also fetch data from the second page in Google, then you can use the pagination from the API. And then we take this output, and return only meter fields. So in this case, I decided to use the AI overview, organic results, as well as the related searches. And the last sub workflow, which has a big impact of the quality of this workflow is this one, because it takes care of fetching data from the Google Search Console. As an example, we pass data such as the domain, because we can also use this workflow for any domain, as long as you have access to it, then start an end date, in order to be able to fetch only relevant data. And since we want to analyze a specific page, we also pass the URL. And all of these parameters are used in the HTTP node, which used in the background the API from Google Search Console, which makes this workflow also cost-effective because the API from the Google Search Console is free. And don't worry, you don't have to recreate all these workflows as well as the sub-workflows because all of them are available inside my community. So in case you want to try it out, feel free to join. And in case you do have any question regarding the main workflow or the sub workflows, then feel free to add them to the comments and we will hear each other in the next video.